Hi, this is Lisa Allen, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn Gmail into a really intelligent RSS feed reader. And the reason we're going to do that is because automation is one of the ways that you can speed up certain aspects of your business. Now we all know that content really is very important. Content generates traffic, content is loved for SEO purposes, content on social media keeps your audiences engaged, and so being able to constantly have a stream of fresh content on your media sites and on your website is very very important to a business. But creating that much content on your own is really really tough and so I'm gonna show you some quick hacks that we can do using Gmail and IFT and some RSS feeds that will make it make it so that task is a lot easier and a lot faster and lets you go and do other more important things in your business. So first let's talk about why we want to use Gmail as a feed reader. Now I'm sure you know that there are a lot of feed readers out there that you can buy or that you can download for free and use. So why would you want to use Gmail as a feed reader? Well there's a few benefits here. First of all you've got auto routing of content to folders using labels. So when you set up your feeds you can put something in the title that shows Gmail where to file that and it's completely configurable. Now you can also filter the content in multiple ways. You can filter it by words in the title or by words in the body of the email. And so if you're receiving your feeds items as emails, that gives you a lot of power to configure those filters to behave exactly how you want so that you get really the best content that you're most interested in and then things that maybe you're not interested in that contain keywords that you're really not interested in you can just filter out entirely so you don't even, don't even have to look at them. Now also because the content is already in Gmail when you receive it using this method it's really easy to forward it to content writers or other people on your team or save it for later research, stuff it in another folder and so that makes it really really nice and convenient. Now also as you know feeds are something that have items on there for a short amount of time so maybe a feed might have 10 or 20 items at most on it and then the older items drop off the feed as newer items are added but maybe you want to refer back to something that's older later. Well a lot of feed readers only pick up what is in the feed right this second but if you have Gmail as your feed reader then you also have these emails that can stay around as long as you want or can be deleted immediately once you're done with them and, or have decided you don't want to do anything with that item. Now also Gmail gives you easy group access from everywhere which means both you and your VAs can access your feed reader and work in it all at the same time which is really cool. So Gmail makes it actually a really good feed reader for those reasons. So we're gonna need a few little things just to pull this trick off. We're gonna need your Gmail account which is free. You're gonna need an IFTTT account or IFT which is also free and then you're just gonna need to find some relevant authority RSS feeds from other sites that are kinda similar to your niche and the more of these that you have that you can set up these these automated recipes to get delivered to you as emails the more content you'll have to choose from so you wanna find as many of those as you can that are actually and Places that are great are would be like top blogs in your industry, YouTube channels provide, you know, videos are, are really great. Also uh, things like Tumblr or Pinterest and so there's a lot of, of sites that really have high domain authority that you can curate content from or use to get news about what's going on so that you can ride the beginning of that wave of when people first start talking about that topic. So let's get into exactly how to do this. It's actually not that hard. It sounds really difficult but it's just a few steps. So first thing you're going to want to go and log into your IFT account. I'm assuming you have one. If you don't then you'll need to create one first. But once you've logged into your IFT account then you'll go to the channels 
and it's across the top and then you'll search for the RSS channel and activate it. So let me just show you what that looks like. So here we are in IFT and right up here you see the word channels. So I'm logged in, just click on channels and here's all the list of the channels now. There are a lot of channels in here now. There used to be a lot fewer when they first got started but they've really added a lot of stuff. So sometimes it's just easiest to search. So I'm just gonna put in here feeds or feed. RSS also works. And then you just click that and then you would connect it. So I could disconnect or I could reconnect it. So just click connect and so now the channel is connected that means it's active and I can use it. So let's go to step two. Now in step two you're going to connect the other channel. Now with IFT there's always a channel that provides the input or the data coming from somewhere and then a channel that receives the data going to somewhere else. So we're going to take something from feeds and we're going to send it to the email channel. So we'll want to go and activate the email channel and you want to activate it with the Gmail address that you want to use for feed reading. And a lot of times they may send you a pin to the email address you tell them you want to use just to make sure it belongs to you. So let's just do that step. Okay, so let's say, let's go back to channels and say email. Now you'll notice in here there's Gmail and there's email. I know it's tempting because we're using Gmail to choose the Gmail one, but that's not the one you want. You actually want just the plain email channel. So click on email and then you'll want to give it the email address that you want to use. And so the email address I want to use is my Gmail account because this is where it will send the items from the RSS feeds that I want to use in my feed reader. So then all I need to do once I put in the email address is just click on send pin and it will ask me to enter the pin. Go over here to my inbox over here and then it will send me a pin, which I would just want to copy out of the email and then click here, put in the pin and click on connect. Okay, so now my channel is connected and I can actually start setting up the next part. See, that was really, really easy. So let's go on to step three. The next thing that you want to do is create the recipe, which is what they refer to in action where it takes and shuttle some data from one channel to another. So we're going to want to go to the My Recipes and click Create a Recipe. So here's My Recipes, Create a Recipe, and then I'm going to want to choose the feed channel. So, so there's our RSS feed channel and when there's a new feed item in that RSS feed then it will do something. So I need to tell it which URL it's checking for these RSS feed items. So let's just use as an example the feed from my Authority SEO Lab blog. So that's the feed URL there. Then I'm click on create trigger and then I want to tell it what channel I'm sending that information to. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to say I'm going to send it to the email channel and then of course there's only one action here to choose so when a new story is published on that feed it will then send me an email which is the ascent, essentially the same thing as putting it into my Google Gmail feed reader for me. So here are the fields. Now these are little pieces of, da of data so the entry title if you look at it see it's like you got these braces on both sides of it that's a kind of like a template tag so that will put some data from that particular service in here. So the entry title would be the title of the post or page that's in the RSS feed. And then the content would be the description or summary or sometimes it's even the whole article. So you've got that and then we've got a couple of breaks so that it won't, uh, the stuff won't all be run together. There will be a space underneath and then we're saying the feed title, so which feed it came from, and then the URL to look at the full text of the article if we want to. And that will be what is emailed to us 
is that. Now in order to make it so that Gmail knows to feed this stuff into our RSS feed reader, we're just going to give it a special little tag. I'm going to put an underscore and then I'm going to put RSS right after that. And that will just mean that Gmail will be able to tell what it's supposed to do with these because we're going to set up a filter in Gmail for this to do this for us. So now I'm just going to click on create action and then we've got create and connect so it lets me kind of write a description here and that's it really. Just click on create recipe and now I've got this recipe and it will send me an email if it finds a new feed item. So now there's just really one more thing that we need to come back into here and do. So the final step is now we want to go back to our Gmail account. We'll go to the settings gear icon in the top right hand corner and then we're going to click on filters and blocked addresses. So let's just go back there really quickly. Okay, so filters and blocked addresses. There's the little settings icon. Settings right there. Filters and blocked addresses. So now all we need to do is that we need to create a new filter. See, there's the create new filter. And you have some things that you can fill in to have it filter on. Well, our feed items are always going to have that underscore RSS in them. So we're going to filter on that. And we've made that intentionally unique so it's not likely to show up in other random messages so things won't get misfiled. So we've got the subject, that, and that's really all that we need to do. Create a filter with this search. And then there's a couple of little things that we're going to want to do with it. First, we're not going to want it to land in our inbox because we want it to be filed away in another folder where we can look at it when we want to. So click on skip the inbox. Now we're not going to want to mark it as read because we want to be able to look and see what we haven't read in our feed reader. So we're going to skip that one. But then we're going to apply a label to it which is the same thing basically as putting it into a folder. So I'm going to new label and I'm going to call this feed reader content. Or you can put just feed reader if you like. Now I also want to mention as you have more and more of, of these feeds coming in, if you set up more recipes, this feed reader content, you can also make subtopics. So if there's a particular feed that you want filed differently, you can nest the label underneath the feed reader content. And so that would be the same as having subfolders. So let's just click on create and we're going to apply that label. Then we can just click on create filter. And so now this filter, anytime it gets an email with the subject that has underscore RSS in it, it will automatically know to put it in the feed reader content and then we can look at that content when we're ready to read the daily news and, and see what's going on in our niche. And so that's really it. That's really all you need to do now that you have set up your filters. If you want to add more feeds to your IFT account and get more things coming in so that you have an awful lot of content coming in every day that you can look at, then it's really easy to just do that by setting up new recipes with a new feed URL for each one. Now as I mentioned also the other nice thing is that you can use the search here so if there's a particular article that you read a lot of feed readers don't really have very good search functions but because of Gmail you can actually find like things that have specific links in them or specific words so it makes it really easy to search and find exactly what you're looking for um, under the content that you have had sent to you and then of course you can reforward these emails to your VAs or just give your VAs access to the account and then everybody will have access to the same materials so I just wanted to mention one other thing too now finding the top ranked authority feeds there's a couple of ways to do it one of them is the slow way the other one is the fast way now the slow way is pretty easy doesn't cost anything and that is just to go to Google and just research the top sites for a keyword and then you just visit the sites that look interesting to you and then you look for a little icon that looks something like this that's got a little um, three curved bars that indicate syndication 
and then you can find and copy the URL from that. Now sometimes that can be a little bit of a hunt and peck to find those, so I actually created a much faster way to do that. It's an automated feed scraping tool, it's called RSS Feed Finder, and it just basically goes out to sites that have a lot of authority and it so it it prefers those kind of sites so it prefers things like YouTube channels the top ranked blogs Tumblr Pinterest uh, a lot of domains Vimeo a lot of domains that have a lot of authority and so being able to grab that kind of content and then if you're resyndicating or using it to auto blog with you get a lot better results and so you're really ahead of the curve. So anyway, that's the fastest way to do it. If you're interested in that particular tool, then there will be a link below this video where you can actually go and, and look at a demo of that tool and how it works. It's really easy. You just put your keywords in, select what type of links you want to get back, kind of feed URLs you want to get back, and click search and it runs off and finds you a bunch and just a very short amount of time. So really easy. Hope you've enjoyed this video about how to turn your Gmail account into a really intelligent RSS feed reader that can be really useful for you and your team when you're doing content or SEO or anything like that. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.